The Book of Isaiah, The Man, The Times, and The Book Isaiah is often referred to as the Messianic prophet because of his many prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus. The New Testament quotes and applies more scriptures from the book of Isaiah than any other Old Testament prophet. Yet Isaiah's work was not solely foretelling the future. A prophet of God was not primarily a future teller, but one who spoke God's word to the people of his own day. The word prophet literally means to boil up like a fountain. Therefore, a prophet was a spokesman for God, not so much a foreteller as a forth teller. Isaiah was God's spokesman to Judea and Jerusalem at the time when the nation was immersed in sin. He spoke God's indictment against their sins, urging them to repent. He then foretold destruction upon them if they did not return to God. In the midst of these dire warnings, Isaiah also foretold of a bright future with a coming Messiah. God would not forget his covenant made to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David. He would spare a remnant of the nation of Israel, out of which would come the Messiah and his new kingdom. Isaiah the Man His name, Isaiah, means salvation of the Lord, or the Lord is salvation and is certainly symbolic of his message. He is described as the son of Amaz, Isaiah 1, 1, 2, 1, and 13, 1, of whom the Bible reveals nothing. He was married and had two sons, Sher Jashub, the remnant shall return, Isaiah 7, 3, and Maher Shalah Ashbaz, in speed spoil beauty hastens, Isaiah 8, 3 whose names also symbolized in his message. Tradition says that Amaz was the brother of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judea, 2 Kings 14.1. This would make Isaiah a close relative to those who were kings during his lifetime and would explain his close association with kings and priests and involvement with world affairs. Isaiah received his visions in the day of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judea, Isaiah 1.1. It is generally thought the vision of the throne scene which occurred in the year Uzziah died, Isaiah 6.1, was the beginning point of his ministry as a prophet, circa 739 B.C. According to the Jewish tradition, Isaiah was executed by Manasseh only a few years after he ascended the throne. One source describes Isaiah as having been sawn asunder with a wooden saw, Hebrews 11.3. This would mean Isaiah prophesied during a period of approximately 50 years, 739 to 690 BC. Isaiah, the Times. It was a time of great political turmoil for the nation of Judea. Assyria was expanding its empire, attacking Israel and Syria to the north. When Judea refused to join the coalition with Israel and Syria to resist Assyria, Judea was attacked by Israel and Syria in retaliation. As Judea seriously considered inviting Assyria to help, Isaiah sought to encourage the king and the people to trust only in Jehovah. King Ahaz of Judah rejected Isaiah's advice and asked Assyria to come to his aid. Assyria accepted and the capital of Israel, Samaria, fell in 722 BC. It soon became apparent that Judea was next on Assyria's hit list. Judea began looking to Egypt in the south for help. Once again, Isaiah counseled the nation to make no alliances, but to trust only in the Lord. King Hezekiah heeded Isaiah, and God rewarded his faith by destroying the Assyrian host, Isaiah 36 and 37. But in a moment of weakness, Hezekiah showed the ambassadors from Babylon, Assyria's in- enemy, the house of his treasures, Isaiah 39, 1 and 2. This prompted Isaiah to foretell that the king's treasures and his descendants 
would be taken away to Babylon. Isaiah 39, 5-7. With this prophecy as an introduction, chapters 40 through 66, Isaiah speaks from the viewpoint of Babylonian exile and foretells of coming pardon, deliverances, and restoration. During this time, God sent several prophets to Israel and Ju- Judea. Hosea, 6, 750 to 725 BC, prophesied mainly to Israel and the northern ten tribes. Micah 735 to 700 BC together with Isaiah spoke primarily to Judea in the south. Isaiah the book. Two major themes run throughout the book. There is the exhortation to trust in the Holy One of Israel. Faith in the Lord would assure forgiveness for their transgressions and deliverances from their enemies. Eight times the people are urged to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. The Messiah to come and the glory of his age is another dominant message. Isaiah spoke frequently of the events to come, foretelling the fall of the heathen nations and the establishment of the kingdom of the Messiah, who would rule in justice and righteousness. Isaiah 2, 1 through 5. Isaiah's favorite designation for Jehovah, Yahweh, is the Lord of Hosts, used 62 times in the book. The name designates the Lord as omnipotent and is used by all the writing prophets except Ezekiel, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah. The term hosts designated the armies of Israel. It could also refer to the angels, the heavenly messengers of the Lord, and the stars as God's hosts, when as here it appears without further qualification. It designates the Lord as the God of all hosts, and is thus an equivalent expression for the all-powerful God. Another designation for the Lord is used by Isaiah in the Holy One of Israel. In his book, it is used 25 times, while found only 6 times in the rest of the Bible. The book of Isaiah can be divided into two major parts. The Assyrian period, chapters 1 through 39, the Babylonian period, chapters 40 through 66. The Assyrian period, chapters 1 through 39, the prophet proclaims the Lord's indictment against Judea and Jerusalem and the coming judgment against them. He portrays the sovereign rule of the Lord of hosts who judges not only Israel, but heathen nations as well. He prophesies that the Lord will use Assyria, Babylon, and the Medes to execute his purposes and afterward judge each of these along with their other nations, bringing them to desolation because of their sins. The Babylonian period, chapters 40 through 66, Isaiah exhorts the afflicted people to have faith and patience. He describes a salvation of and future blessing to come upon the true Israel of God. Though Isaiah did not live during the period of Babylonian captivity, through inspiration he was able to speak words of comfort to those who would experience that difficult time of Israel's history. This ends the introduction to the book of Isaiah, the man, the times, and the book.